Welcome to Chat Tsunami. Hello everyone and welcome to the 11th episode of Chat Tsunami. My name's Satsunami and today I am joined with my very good friend who you may recognise from the Beer and Chill podcast, Craig. Hello there, thank you for joining me. Hello Satsunami, it's good to be here, streaming live from the Beer and Chill studio at my side of course and uh, joining you on, on this, the wonderful Twitch world today. Chatting about well, I'll leave that to you because I'm, I'm getting I'm getting like my co-host vibe on him. I'm about to stop stop plugging. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are we, what are we chatting about today? <laughs> no, 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 no. The floor's all yours. <laughs> oh right. Um, this is the beer and chill podcast now. <laughs> the unofficial episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm get on here, mate. Um, yeah. No, um, I mean, if you want me to, yeah, we're gonna chat. <laughs> no, we're no. Gonna chat about, I'm, I'm taking control. We're gonna chat about indie games. Yeah. yeah, you can't see my face right now, but I would have just been like, no, no, go ahead, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, as Greg was pointing out there, we are going to be talking about the wonderful world of indie games. And yeah, it is. I have to admit, initially when you proposed the topic, I was like, I wonder how much you can actually get out of talking about indie games. And then the more we were kind of talking off stream about just the sheer amount of indie games that are there. (laughs) There are, I mean, the list alone that I've got and the list I think you said you have from your end are just yep. <laughs> it's a large amount spoilers yeah, uh, yeah i'm so, not gonna mention every, i'm not gonna mention every game on this list but i'm sitting with about 25 games right now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're my yeah. big hitters they're like the 25 most important indie games yeah exactly it's just like oh my god this is gonna be that's gonna be a long one maybe <laughs> So, yeah, before we get into talking about, like, our, you know, like, our experiences, I suppose, with indie games and, yeah, basically what we think of them. Yeah, I'm going to throw a question to you first. What would you say is the definition of an indie game? Because I know a lot of people, you know, when they think of an indie game, they would just think of, like, a kind of retro homage to, you know, like, past games that are, you know, that are kind of more iconic and things like that. So how would you define it? Yeah, ultimately it's down to the studio making it and it's about like mm-hmm. what kind of larger corporations control them if they are totally independently making their own decisions. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's in the game. And like it's it's really fun because um yeah, you do get a lot of the two like the common if someone says indie game, you, you immediately do think of the two D um small child in a large universe uh, trope, which is like a, such a big one in indie gaming. Mm-hmm. Um a great one, which is why it gets used a lot. But yeah, really it can be anything and it, it's fun because it's just to do with the studio making it. Mm-hmm. Some games are indie, uh, sorry, some games are retro, some games are completely new concepts, some games have got like super intense graphics, like, you know, people usually think of like 16 bit graphics, but no, some of them, that's graphics. Now, you've got a lot of games that are licensed, so you've got things like Audio Surf, Avicii and Vector, the Friday the 13th game, we mentioned that. So, like, it's, it's a whole host of things now. Indie games are everywhere. Usually, the price point's a bit lower. That's usually one way of telling. And then, yeah, learn about the studio and trying to find out a bit about them. Yeah. They're kind of the two main things. I mean, would you say that indie games have managed to shake off that reputation of being like, uh, you were saying they're like being just 16 bit games? But, I mean, especially when we were talking about it earlier, you know, it's just, it's weird to think that there's so many variations of indie games. Uh, it's yeah, like yeah. it's not just one aesthetic. No, it's kind of crazy, and especially now that so many companies are supporting it. You've got mm-hmm. like PlayStation, Nintendo, Microsoft. They all have their stores that are just access. You know, every indie game on the planet. Mm-hmm. Steam has just an unlimited library of indie games. It's really incredible to see the size, the scale of it now. And I actually just realized, I'm looking at my list, I've not included things like you know, we've got games like Fortnite and like mm-hmm. PUBG that come out of nowhere. Oh, uh, yeah. These like among us and these games that grow up um, thanks to the support of obviously our community but these bigger companies hosting them so there's it's, it's so much variety and I think a lot of people still maybe don't take indie games as serious because there is still a bit of a, a reputation but I think the years coming up now you're gonna there's gonna be more and more of a push now that people are gonna just be like not even be able to tell mm-hmm. some games are indie or not you know what I mean it's so I'll mention I'll mention one of my top games I'm just gonna mention it now yeah no, um, H- Hades came out this uh, last year mm-hmm it was my game of the year last year, and that's an indie game, and people have played it and don't even know it. it, it it's a full-on, like, 100-hour experience. You couldn't tell it's an indie game unless you knew, I don't think. Hades has been everywhere, though. 
Like, you genuinely would. With all the exposure it gets, you would never yeah. think it was, like, an indie game. Like, there's a lot of games like that. I mean, even before um, we were talking a little bit before we started tonight. And yeah, it's like, the amount of games you look at and you think... Is that because we were actually asking one another? We're like, we were talking about um, Little Nightmares as well. That was like quite a prominent example. Yep. And it's a bit weird because I never, initially, I didn't think of like Little Nightmares as being an indie property. And then there's a lot of people who are putting it on their list saying, oh, yeah, it's definitely like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, it's, it's the greatest indie game ever, you know. And you're kind of like, is it even an indie game? Because I mean, I mean, would you consider it an indie game? I'm really glad you brought this up because yeah. um, because I because I asked you to before the scene started. No, um, yeah. got that. No, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so I'm gonna say yes. But a because I know the studio of a quite small studio, um, and B because I've actually met a bunch of people that worked on the game, and they were at that EGX conference I like to go to, mm-hmm. and they had because it's they don't do many conferences, so you get two types of stands at these conferences typically. You have like, or for the bigger games, I should say, you have like EA who just send over the generic stand that they've got for every single show, and then you've yeah. got the smaller brands who can only go to like a couple of shows, so they'll pull out all the stops. So at EGX, the year that Little Nightmares came out, they had people dressed as the chefs running around screaming at people, and they had one of the girls dressed as um, what's the wee girl's name again? And it like, I don't yeah. know if she has a name. The one with the yellow jacket. Anyway, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The she was like climbing on, Yeah, she was like climbing on top of the on top of the stand, just like, you know, 10 foot in the air and walking around the top of it to hide from the chefs and all that. It's so funny. What, so they were um, just like running about, like on the yeah, floor? Yeah, in and costume yeah. stuff, yeah. Jeez, it was oh. incredible. And they were giving out sweets as well, which I don't know if I should have taken one because it was from that chef. I, I, it. All I'm thinking is like how sweaty that costume must be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a fan in there. The thing was huge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they, and just like, that was kind of one thing I wanted to bring up. Mm-hmm. Just, that but also like one of the other sort of hallmarks of indie games is like that boots to the ground fan interaction yeah you know what i mean like when was the last time i don't know ubisoft asked your opinion on a game that you played well um hades for example had a a massive long pre-release section where they they sent it to fans and things got tweaked based on their feedback and all that um that's another i think big hallmark of indie games is like the fan involvement like people feel like they've helped create this game it does seem a lot more personal though doesn't it yeah Like, even when you look in, like, websites like Instagram and things like that, or Twitter, I mean, obviously you get fan art for a lot of games, um, especially, like, AAA ones and things like that. But I don't know, it seems a lot more, I wouldn't say personal, but you know what I mean? It seems like, as you said, a lot more interactive and, I suppose, a lot more kind of likely that the, you know, the makers of these games are going to see that kind of content. Yeah, so, I think it's it's about getting, like, a personal connection as well, though. Like, if mm-hmm. you don't know, like, I couldn't name anyone that worked on, I don't know, Star Wars Battlefront 2, as an example. Yeah. But I could name you a couple of people that worked on some indie games, you know what I mean? It's, it's about mm-hmm. building that connection with people. And, like, the I think as well, the smaller your community is, the easier it is to interact. So, mm-hmm. like you say, the fan art, people, people enjoy these fan art and they get, it gets, like, Hollow Knight, one of my favorite games, Oh, that's me starting Hollow Knight. That's yeah. so everyone just want to buckle. If everyone wants to buckle down, this is me for the next half now. Yeah, this is a this is now. <laughs> I was going to say this is now a Hollow didn't Knight it. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't take me long to get onto. That was just no. me steering the whole time. <laughs> no, only eleven minutes. You're you know there you're you doing go. well. <laughs> I gave you I gave you eleven minutes to chat yeah. whatever the hell you wanted, and it was like Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight. Yeah. No, but they have tons of fan out in their Twitter account, like retweet stuff and. Mm-hmm. Um, people they'll, they'll go like things that people post and you know what I mean they'll, they're actually mm-hmm. interactive and that I think that really helps build up your reputation it helps people if people see you're invested they'll give you stuff back you know what I mean there's a, there's a good oh, bit yeah. of give and take and I suppose that kind of leads on like quite well to our next point so another question that I've got to you and honestly I hope you don't feel as if you're on the spot here <laughs> when I go to ask you this yeah. but what would you say personally is the difference like other than the obvious like budget and you know the the amount of resources they've got what would you say is like one of the main differences between like an indie game versus like a triple a title like you said they are like more interaction Mm. and kind of feel more personal but what else would you like say is a difference so one thing i'll I'll, i like to talk about when it comes to indie games is i think you, you get to follow a person's vision a lot more it actually kind of ties into this personal side of it, but it's personal in the sense of it's a team's vision and it gets to get ran to completion. So obviously you're going to get indie games that don't play very well. So 
you know, yeah. this is this is the kind of everything. But yeah. you see games like um, Cyberpunk or Mass Effect, Andromeda, Pokemon Sword and Shield. You know, all these games that come out, and they're like people don't like them when they come out because they've had tons of features cut or they're full of bugs, and that's a part of what gaming is becoming because games are so complicated and people are on such a strict time schedule. This isn't a... I think I'm going to win this. This isn't a, a weird side effect that's going to go away. Like, games being released buggy is a is going to be the future mm-hmm. because of strict time limits, people making money off this. And I feel like indie gaming, you get a chance to really... People, they don't have to release games on time because there's no, you know, stockholders holding them to it or there's no... They've got time to interact with the fans and explain to them why they're late. You know, like that kind of personal relationship. Mm-hmm. And so Hollow Knight, again, is a great example. They went to make a DLC pack for a secondary character and they worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and went, oh my God, we've got a whole new game here. Do you mind if we have a year off and we're going to make this a full game? And that's what they've done. They gave a bunch of free DLC out for Hollow Knight that wasn't this extra bit they were working on. And then they've gone and announced a whole new game. Yeah, and that's it's been delayed. But uh, <laughs> blame, 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 blame uh, 2020. But oh, yeah, um, of course. like that kind of, to me, it's the care. And the, you can tell something, I, I think so anyway, you can tell when something's just one person's gone, I really, really like XYZ in a game and I'm going to make a game with that in it. You know what I mean? You Especially yeah. like a lot of the retro games, you know, we're looking at things like, um, I don't know, Stardew Valley is an example, but they've gone over like farm simulators, let's just build the best one we can and yeah. we'll patch it every so often and we'll bring people into it and get them to give us feedback and you get this, almost a strive for perfection with a lot of games. Yeah. Um, which I don't think you quite see in a lot of AAA titles. I mean, I do agree. I think that if it's a big company, like, going back to what you were saying with, like, Nintendo, Cyberpunk, or, you know, whatever games, like, despite the controversy, you know, it's their definitely got a, fa- a framework, you know, yeah. for what they need to, you know, kind of bring out. And they've discussed, like, what would be best, what would probably... Yep. I mean, I'm not, like, for a minute saying, like, I'm a fly in the wall on these meetings or anything oh, no. to be like, oh yes, that's what they talk about in these. <laughs> yeah, it's a busy- like, you know, Vincent Adult Man from Bojack. <laughs> it's like, yes, yeah, business, business. <laughs> but yeah, it's they have to kind of fit it in a framework because yep. I think maybe it's just, this is me speculating, but I think it's probably just because they've gotten so big that this is their brand. You know, it's like they've established themselves as, whether it's Nintendo or microsoft you know like certain games establish themselves in a certain way so the bigger they get the kind of the more restricted almost they become yeah. sometimes not always the case but no, mm, not. usually yeah especially for like money makers and things like that yeah i was just gonna say no i just totally agree with me and what i was gonna say is especially games that are on a yearly release mm-hmm. you know you've got your fifa you've got um pokemon are doing yearly releases now call of duty's got that two-year flip cycle thing that it does i don't know if it still does yeah. that or not you've got this whole like built-in time that has the, the game has to come out mm-hmm. to meet this this deadline mm-hmm. and i think you know like a game like a fifa game um obviously they've got all the licenses which gives them a huge advantage but it's not the best football game out there and oh, yeah. people you know people will find that out if they go looking at other sports games in the indie market there's better mm-hmm. better games of the same genre and yeah it's that kind of because i think i talked about this last week with adam when we were talking about gaming sequels that like we didn't really want to see and like the kind mm-hmm. of downfalls of that and one of the things we talked about probably for length now that I think about it, was <laughs> just this idea of a lot of games kind of being very, like, set in their ways, if you know what I mean. Just kind of being sure. like, right, okay, we've got a winning formula, this is how we're going to go forward kind of thing. And don't get me wrong, maybe that is the safe way. This is the thing I find quite interesting, and sorry for kind of going back to, like, Pokemon or something, but, <laughs> y- you know, it's like, is probably the best example because whenever they make like a spin-off or something kind of you know when they make a spin-off or something that's not part of the core games whoever makes it like for instance pokemon snap is being made by is it bandai namco i think and i think i think for the new one anyway and because of that i think they'll have like a lot more leeway to kind of add what they want and it's the same with like Pokemon Coliseum because I don't think that was Game Freak either. I think that was Genius Sorority or something like that. Uh, I was what... going to mention Pog Pokken. That's, oh, that's Pokken, like, yeah. Uh-huh. That was really well received and like mm. they got to really just tighten up a whole combat system that was they built mm. it from scratch. It's crazy. And exactly, it's that kind of like 
yeah, it's just because someone else is doing it, you know, that's probably not going to be the moneymaker, but if it is a moneymaker, then, like, that, that's still great either way. But, you know, it's like they can kind of distance themselves and say, oh, no, that wasn't us. That game wasn't yeah. us. Whereas, that's the thing. We're, we're shouting at a multi-million yeah. dollar company, though, aren't yeah, we? Exactly. So, but, you know, it, <laughs> it is one of those things. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get, you know, get stuff Pokemon, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're we're obviously not making as much money as Game Freak. <laughs> so why risk it? You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I suppose the whole phrase "if it ain't broke, don't fix it." But I mean, looking back to like indie games, it's really interesting to see the difference though between as we were saying that kind of framework of oh we're just gonna like especially as you said for like yearly series like call of duty fifa that kind of thing compared to ones that actually have a chance to come out and do their own thing like one of the examples i can think of is and it's a game that i'm glad adam isn't co-hosting in this one because he probably (laughs) would be groaning heavily but um castle crashers is one castle crashers is one that i discovered during university and there was one of my flatmates who came in and he was like oh do you want to play this you know this game that i've got my xbox 360 i was like yeah sure what is it and it was this kind of cartoony beat em up game with like these knights and it had like a lot of humor and everything to it and i was like i I don't know you know like i've never heard of this game not sure if it's going to be any good and in all seriousness it is one of my favorite games of all time because it just seems as if these guys like didn't you know it's like they just made the game they wanted to make and yeah they just went for it but the weird thing is like the same people who made that went on to make a platforming game called battle block theater so see both of these games couldn't recommend them highly enough like between the humor and just i don't know i just really enjoyed myself with them i thought they were absolutely great games but yeah it's like they're both two completely different games i mean they're kind of a similar like aesthetic like kind of the drawn you know characters that you play as but they're both different genres and i think if castle crashers had been like this multi-million company product i think maybe you know like a really triple a game i think Mm. that we would probably be getting castle crashers too or maybe they would be milking it like minecraft (laughs) (laughs) just like castle crashers 5 update 12 you know it's like it probably wouldn't look like castle crashes though like it would look like um devil may like i just i'm trying to give like the closest adjacent example like devil may cry or bayonetta or something it wouldn't Mm -hmm. be like a it wouldn't be like a 2d throwback Mm -hmm. hack and slash like a a, you know it's based off like the old Mm -hmm. arcade hack and slashes into it so it's like the teenage Ninja mutant turtles and all that so like if it was to be made by triple it wouldn't it wouldn't have any of the same dna it would you know Mm -hmm. they wouldn't they wouldn't Mm-hmm. making a retro game they would have made it you know future they would have made it in the year before i think it was like 2010 or something came out but they would they yeah, would have made it like some... a god of war game or something that kind of thing i'm just thinking like if any of you listening have like played castle crashers you'll know it's like a very cartoony kind of game mm-hmm. both in like the way the characters are drawn and everything and i'm just imagining one of those like horrible you know, like hyper realistic, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Unity <laughs> engine models. I was like, Unreal Engine. <laughs> uh, and it's just like, no, no, I, I couldn't. <laughs> I could not play it. Right. I don't know. I feel as if I'd be betraying the original game. I'd just be like, Could you imagine the? Could you imagine the trailer for it though? Oh no! What you mean? Four like... brothers <laughs> in the world. <laughs> the world. The castle. Oh, that would be that would castle be crashes. It actually reminds me of uh, this is a kind of slight tangent here. But have you ever seen that comic where it's the guy who goes to the cinema and he sees that they're making a not a game a film of his favorite game? And it's like his favourite game's blue. And he goes to the cinema is like, oh boy, I can't wait to see this film based off my favourite game blue. And he goes to the cinema and the screen just flashes red and it's just got the word <laughs> blue on it. And it's just like, <laughs> he's just like gasping. It's a bit like that where it's just like, yeah, they, do, they just don't get the point. <laughs> yeah. Another question that kind of falls up from this beyond us, like bashing, you know, multi-million corpor- dollar <laughs> corporations um why, why don't you why don't you reply to my emails nintendo i've got so many great ideas <laughs> no, you know the amount of times i've added at them and they just uh, yeah i'm like I've, I've got great ideas for pokemon <laughs> <laughs> oh what if we brought back sprites and yeah that, that that's why i'm blocked now but wait yeah, don't worry, I'll cut this out in post. No worry. <laughs> That's don't... fine, it saves me going into my rant about why Ice Type has so many weaknesses. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, don't get me started. Right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Yeah, moving on. <laughs> what would you say, and this is a question, I was actually inspired by what you were talking about with indie games. So what genres would you say work best with indie games? Because the only reason like, I'm kind of thinking of this is because when I was asking you about ideas um, for this episode, you were kind of given some different genres like multiplayer platforming things like that and i mean that is quite an interesting question because as we were saying at the very beginning you think are indie games just restricted to like one thing or yeah are they a multitude of things and obviously as we've established that they do come in many forms so yeah what would you say works best with indie games it's funny because if you'd asked me this question a year ago, mm-hmm. I would have said, you know, your 2D platformers, your Castlevania style games like Hollow Knight, uh, Bloodstain, Ritual of Night, yeah. um, Shovel Knight, a lot of nights, um, <laughs> Black and Melee, um, <laughs> but like a Castle lot of like crashes. small scale <laughs> games, like 2D games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cuphead's another great example of that. Yeah. But seeing the last couple of years, these things have really exploded in terms of especially things like, not to put too much of my geek hat on here. But um, I've done a bit of work on personally personal work on the Unreal Four engine. I tried to make a game a few years ago, mm-hmm. and the most Unreal just keep providing more and more and more stuff. And you're seeing people now that can make because like I said two years ago, if you asked me this question, I would have said no first person shooters, indie games can't can't do them. Mm-hmm. You're seeing them coming out now, like Super Hot is the obvious example. It's more of a puzzle game, but there's that one that came out called uh, the EDM. Oh yeah, came out and it was like a rhythm shooting game with like Doom style graphics. That's incredible. Um, I think it was made by like a tiny team. You got games like my personal favorite, um, one of my favorite games ever, uh, Journey on the PS3. Mm-hmm. You know the that kind of timeline. Um, made by I think they called that game company or this game company one of those funny mm-hmm. types and that was like a 3D platformer puzzle usually these puzzle games but these puzzle games are 2D platforms but everything's getting you know done now um, there's RPG games that are made by indie developers obviously Undertale but Ubisoft Montreal published Child of Light which is like a, almost like a Final Fantasy game but done over to 20 hours Damn. and so there's so many now and it's like I couldn't even give you one genre and all that I'm just like <laughs> every genre now has been like been done there were so many things that once upon a time i would have said out of, sc- out of scale you know like there's so much scale in some of these games but now mm-hmm. with all the the amazing engines that people are doing the, the groundwork people are leaving behind it's it's possible to do so much now in the game it's incredible mm-hmm. god there's just so much to talk about when it comes to like the different joint <laughs> because as we were saying before you know you would kind of I mean, do you think there still is like a reductionist kind of view of indie games as one genre? Like, do you think some people look down on it and be like, oh, all indie games are kind of the same? I don't know if people look down on it or just so much don't understand it. Yeah. I think there's, there's people who probably, you know, the fact that how game sales work show you for themselves. You know what I mean? That more people buy the to play games and buy indie games every year. But I think um, I think a lot of people in streaming, you know, people like yourself, um, have a lot to have a lot to, to answer for popularising indie games. So like, there's games now like Among Us or mm-hmm. Fall Guys or PUBG. I think yeah. that was an indie game when it came out. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it was because it was in early access, wasn't it? It must um, have been, yeah. All those kind of games, like I don't think people know. A lot of people don't know anymore what an indie game even is. That line is so bloody when it comes to like <laughs> suddenly these yeah. massive games are exploding. I get uh, getting over it as well as another great example of just like a game that was just like someone's someone's hobby or project, and then all of a sudden it becomes mm-hmm. the biggest game in the world, and people are like, holy crap, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. So to answer your point, I think some people probably still do, mm-hmm. but I think that line of like what is an indie game has become so thin. I think yeah. a lot of people. I play indie games that even realise it. I mean, just look at like some of the most, uh, as you were saying, like look at some of the most popular games on Twitch just now, or at least last year. As you were saying, we had Among Us, Fall Guys, and one of the ones I've actually got on my list, thank goodness, <laughs> is Phasmophobia, yeah. which yeah. I played myself. And yeah, it's like, it's insane how popular some of these games were. Like even before they were released to everyone else, I think in the case of Fall Guys, although I could be wrong on this, I think they gave out like exclusive keys to the game to certain streamers before it like became public. Like obviously, like that's a great tactic on their part, but it just shows you like the influence as well that people can have. Because it's actually quite funny. I was thinking about this um, just as you were talking there, and I remember like years ago when obviously a time before twenty twenty where I used to come and visit you, and it almost felt as if, in a good way, I'm saying this in a very good way, <laughs> but it felt as if like every month or so, whenever I came to visit you, you would always be playing like a different indie game. <laughs> Yeah. So 
yeah, it would be like one time it would be, you know, Crypt of the Necro Dancer, like a great haha, an upbeat game, which it literally yeah, is, yeah. it's a rhythm game. And then like another time you'd be playing Untitled Goose Game oh. and yeah, great game as well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I mean one of the other ones I remember, I think probably when we went to visit Adam one time, is when we played Overcooked. Yeah. And honestly, oh, and um, Human Fall Flat, let's not forget that. Um, <laughs> but, but let's forget that. Yeah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go game playing that with you guys, man. Yeah, the less said. Growing, but... growing game, but not with you guys. <laughs> I, don't think it's a, I, don't, I don't think anybody's had a positive thing to say about it after the first, <laughs> like after the first couple of levels, I think people have just said, yeah, no, forget this game. It's, incre- it's, it's incredible, but yeah. don't play it with people that are going to stress you out. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just... Oh, such a weird game <laughs> but it's one but yeah. thing one thing you kind of sort of half mentioned there i just kind of want to zone in on real quick yeah yeah you mentioned playing games with me and that's mm-hmm. to me that's one of the major things about mm-hmm. indie gaming that I, I do want to touch on yeah is the world of co-op is couch co-op is still very very much alive in indie gaming mm-hmm. and i feel like that's something that's really not supported anymore in AAA games even like the nintendo switch i've got that and that whole gimmick is that it's got two controllers and I'm playing a bunch of games, and it's like you've got player one and the baby controller. You know what I mean? Oh, like um, yeah. Mario Odyssey is a great example where it's like, You're yeah, the yeah, hat. You can, <laughs> yeah, you can play as a hat. That's fun, isn't it? It's like, uh, not really. Um, but games like uh, Overcooked is an example. I'm actually playing that through with my wife again right now. Mm-hmm. We start with starting our Overcooked journey together again. Oh, and um, <laughs> uh, we survived it once already. So this is the uh-huh. post lockdown attempt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, like that game puts you on equal footing. And there is no room to like mm-hmm. um, mess up, bubble out in your. Oh no, I'm playing the hat. You, you, it's, yeah. it's up to you what you do. This is you. You two are both part of a team, and I love that in games. Mm-hmm. And I really feel like Goose Game got an update with co-op in it, just to mention Goose Game again. Mm-hmm. But um, I just love that that's still such a big thing. And I feel like so many, so many to play games don't let you do couch co-op, and it's such a shame when it's mm-hmm. so such a big part of gaming for me. I remember, I think it could have been Halo Five, and I could be totally wrong on this, but it was like one of these like really popular shooter games that really, I'm sure it was Halo Five or something, or maybe it was like one of the like Halo Four. It was one of these ones where they said they were going to get rid of the split screen because yes. they were just like, again, you know, everyone plays online, you know, no one really wants to do it anymore, and it's so weird because as you were saying, like with indie games, there is quite a lot of emphasis on you know like multiplayer like i mean look at the games i mentioned earlier totally not gushing over these games but like (laughs) castle crashers and battle block theater those are two games you can play like by yourself like you can go away play through it you know have a great time but if you know you want to play with friends or you've got friends over yeah you can go at it and just play through it as this co-op experience and it is very yep. nostalgic because I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to call us out for being old. <laughs> but, <laughs> back but, in my day, yeah, back in our day. But I mean, you do remember a time where you know there wasn't really online gaming, mm. which I'm not saying we were like the Atari generation, like we're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's like we came from a time where it was like we do remember before you know you went over to somebody's house or like a friend's house and you played these games and it was a lot of fun and you know obviously that's where the uh, mad cat controller memes come from where it's like the kid turning around to his friend saying oh you can be player too (laughs) and they give them like this horrible beat up you know, controller, like, stuck together with duct tape and all the Cheeto dust and things on it, and you're like, oh, oh. no, no, no. <laughs> it's like dark times. Whereas, dark times. Yeah, whereas now you can get your own Cheeto dust on your, controller, <laughs> on your own controller at a safe distance. And it's like, I have to admit, like, those were some, like, really great times, you know, just being able to play those games with friends and kind of going yeah. back to that time. And because it is, like, I mean, I have spoke about this, I think, in a couple of past episodes, but it's like some games, like, for instance, Call of Duty, if you're over at someone's house and you're watching them play it, it's a game that is a lot more exciting to play than it is to watch because I mean I have been over where people have been playing games and I've just been like really bored kind of looking (laughs) thinking oh yeah that's cool yeah you shot the guy yeah like you know obviously unless it's like you know they've just bought the game and you're kind of doing it for moral support (laughs) to be like yay well done but 
with indie games, and I'm not saying like all indie games do this, no. but there is a huge majority of them that provide this opportunity. And I mean, look at Phasmophobia. I mean, yep. that game, although it's still technically, is it still an alpha? Or beta. I, be- I believe so, yeah. It's still pre release. Yeah. Like, even still, despite that, I mean, I definitely got my money's worth out of it. And being yeah. able to just, like, say to your friends, oh, yeah, I'm logging in to go hunt some ghosts. <laughs> and they're, like, <laughs> they're like, wait, what? No, no, come back. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> so, yeah, it's just amazing how far, like, you know, they've come along. And that yep. is the thing as well. Like, obviously not in this year. You know, you're not going to be inviting people over. But it's the fact that you can do that yep. if you wanted. And there's a lot of people, you know, obviously everyone's different, but there's people who are home with families. And I, I, I think of, like, the times me and my brother used to play games together. I think, like, yeah. now, sitting there with, like, I don't know, a PS5, mm-hmm. and you've got two games and they're, they're both single player. And there's a family, I don't know, three people. Yeah. And it's like, oh, great. This thing takes four controllers, but... uh all the games are only one player you know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> it seems so strange um yeah. and i really would like to play games with my wife and but there's there's so few games where i think you get put on equal footing like mm-hmm. i was saying about overcooked where you're in equal footing and you're working together we're gonna play cuphead i think i'm mean, gonna try to convince her to play that but i'm scared i'll get angry at that one because it's so yeah. difficult but um <laughs> like that's kind of and for me that couch co-op will never go away mm-hmm. um yeah people aren't getting to play this year you're totally right and you know i, I so miss that thing of bring people over and playing games like uh you know these co-op games mm-hmm. but these f- families are always gonna you know be playing games oh, and yeah. getting a chance for families to get to play games together to me that's such a cool thing that's important as well because i mean I, I was gonna go on and say like how it's a good team building exercise and then i remembered mm. um among us and <laughs> yeah yeah i retract that statement your honor <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah but no jokes aside it is just such a good experience to go through with your friends and just you know just even having that option like i'm not saying every single game has to have i mean it does hollow knight have like a multiplayer thing or is that just a, like a straight nah, total yeah single player. yeah i mean it's okay like i'm not saying like as i was saying every you know indie game has to have a multiplayer as well but again it just it goes back to the idea of how diverse yeah, indie yeah. games can be like it doesn't just have to be like a single player it can be you know yeah as you said like couch co-op or yeah just anything you want really like I- i'm sure there's like taste for everyone i mean it's a bit like you know how you get those people like this is me bringing out the inner scott and maybe you know how you get people with whiskey tasting they right. say like <laughs> there's always a whiskey out there for you or something like that and yep. it is it's like there's always like an indie game even when you look at like some of the pixel art ones do you think oh maybe this game's not for me it's like maybe you don't have to kind of mm. rely on that like you don't have to play overcooked to enjoy indie games it's like you could just like be perfectly happy in whole night or if you're you know you hate yourself super meat boy super <laughs> <laughs> oh, meat boy's getting buried here yeah i love that game i see but... I'll, i think it's a good game but it's just so just for context i um, went back to play it just just off stream just by myself and yeah when i got to the first boss i got my ass absolutely handed to me <laughs> and i think it was probably just because i was absolutely shattered that day and i was just like yeah you know what forget yeah, this excuse, game <laughs> excuses 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 yeah. you, got, you got your ass kicked and you can't admit it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um hold on i'm just googling how i can actually cut this off a live stream <laughs> <laughs> how to reverse time how to reverse um, time. but no and just kind of i want to just mm. back on to that because i think he's talking about there's games out there for everyone i think one of the things i'm i love about indie games is they'll take a game that you maybe enjoyed as a kid and evolve it because we spoke about this before i think on being chill podcast we did mm-hmm. the ps1 memories and we spoke about a lot of games that were great, but the game itself aged. You know, mm. quality, quality of life just wasn't a big thing in the PS1. You know what I mean? Like uh, inventory management or, you know, like I, I always think of like the Game Boy Pokemon games, but it's like you've mm. got, what is it, 100 items in your bag and just that's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you've got no other choice. Yeah. So like things like a, a Shovel Knight as an example, you've got like this really retro game and maybe you really enjoyed 2D platforms as a kid. But by the way, now you can save in between levels. And now there's a... 60 frames per second and now you know I mean, and, and to me that's a really important thing is this like yeah you can revisit the games you put as a kid but you can revisit them with all the help of us <laughs> that <laughs> gaming has brought us along the you don't have yeah. to go back to the ps1 and play a game that doesn't really work mm-hmm. you can that's not fair but you know what i mean yeah yeah like, no. Games, games have come on, they have improved, and you know a lot of indie games harken back to that, but bring that quality of life along with it, and I think that, to me, is such a big thing as well. So yeah, 
there may not be a game out there, there will be an indie game out there for you because there'll be an indie game based off of your favourite game the chances are yeah <laughs> Someone's going to message me and they're like, oh, there's no indie game based off of like Barbie Explorer 7 or something. <laughs> well, funny you should mention that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I was going to say, Nami presents Barbie Explorer you know? 8. <laughs> no, I was just going to say Castle Crashers. Like, why bother with Barbie? Just go for Castle Crashers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, funny uh, enough, a lot of people say that Hollow Knight was a was a sequel to. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. So, if you want to understand the deep and rich lore of it, um, of Barbie's, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> I've, I've forgotten <laughs> the name already. It. It's like yeah, I've yeah. what I've called it. <laughs> yeah, it's like Barbie's whatever. Yeah, yeah. Play Castle Crashers and then you play Hollow Knight because they've both mm. got knights in them, so it must yeah, be yeah. the same story. It must be related. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, something, something pixels. Yeah, that's. <laughs> But but, uh, oh, sorry. I just, sorry, one more thing just on that. Yeah. And a couple of franchises have died over the years, like, and people still yearn for them. So, mm-hmm. off the top of my head, uh, Castlevania. I don't know what happened to that. I'm not in on the inner politics of how games companies work, but I know that the people that made the games stopped making the games. Yeah. And the director or the creator of these games now is an indie developer and made, I think it's Bloodstained. Which of the night is called? Is it Bloodstained? Well, one of these games, I know. No. Or, um, you know, and they've gone off and like they get a chance to make the continue a franchise that's ended early. Yeah. And that's another really cool thing. I just wanted to bring that up as well. So even if you have if you've followed a franchise and you're like, oh man, it'd be so great if there's a Castlevania sequel, there is. So go play it. <laughs> just, you just need to go find out what happened to it. Yeah. They don't make Castlevania games anymore, do they? No, I it's, like I said, it's some yeah. it's some kind of yeah. Them. Yeah. <laughs> something happened and they, they stopped making them kind of ironic considering it's all about vampires is it not yeah ain't, but... no, <laughs> ain't no rising from that one <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah on behalf of uh, chat tsunami i apologize to any castlevania fans out there <laughs> 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 yeah, i'm so sorry speaking of dead franchise no i'm joking oh. um <laughs> I was kind of going back to what you were saying there, when you were saying that games can kind of learn from the past, Mm. and it doesn't necessarily have to be, you have to stick to those mechanics, like you were saying for Pokemon, where, you know, oh, you can only have so many items in your bag, and I think a lot of RPGs at the time did that as well, um, where it was like, oh, obviously because of space, I'm assuming it was like a memory thing. Yeah, just, you know, it was tougher to make games back then, Yeah, you know, you're on a tidy cartridge. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> Give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, as you were saying, like, or what we were saying at the beginning when we were talking about Pokemon especially, or just any of these franchises that kind of go on and they kind of get set in their ways, or they kind of spice it up a bit with like the extra feature or two and then they'll, you know, they'll rein it in for the core yep. gameplay and things. So one of the examples which you actually reminded me of just before we started the stream was Temtem. And mm-hmm. I do think that is like a really both an interesting like take on so if you look at like Pokemon and I suppose to an extent any other like popular game of a genre where it's like almost as if they've capitalized that corner yep. of it. So it's like especially with Pokemon, and I don't want to keep you know ranting about it, but you know that way where it's like with FIFA or Pokemon or whatever, people will kind of complain about it and say oh, this is rubbish, and think that there's no alternatives. Yep. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Temtem is, like, the saviour that's going to swoop in <laughs> and correct, like, all the wrongs. Because I have played, like, a couple hours of it, and I absolutely loved it. Like, the changes they made were, like, just different. I mean, technically, the core mechanics are the same, you know. You catch monsters, you beat up random children and adults, you know. Steal their money. Yeah, steal their money. Um, yep. <laughs> It's just the only difference is the things you catch them in, the, like, digital cards, uh, you know, like, small changes like that. But they do, like, they make tweaks to it just enough. Like, there's an item in the game that essentially acts as a portable Pokemon center, almost, where you can just oh, yeah. heal all your creatures while you're out in the wild. Just so, you know, like, it'll keep you going or it'll give you enough strength to, like, get back with everyone, kind of limping. And... Like, small changes like that I thought were really interesting. 
Whereas yep. it seems as if with games like Pokemon or, you know, just any, you know, AAA kind of huge franchise, you, you know, they're obviously kind of set in their ways. And I do think it is quite an interesting take that they are kind of picking up on the things that fans are, like, asking for. Or yep. not even asking for, but, like, noticing, like, these small things. A lot of time these people are fans themselves. Like, yeah. you, you know, the guys that probably make Tim Tim are probably massive Pokemon fans and went, Man, I love this game so much. And that's the thing, these games aren't supposed to be insults, they're tributes, you know, and it's yeah. man, I really love Pokemon, but oh I wish I could heal one outside of battle fully in one item. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. such an obvious thing. Oh no, I just need to use six hyper potions instead. No, I'll just have a Pokemon set item. Done. Yeah. Final Fantasy Nines had it. You know, Final Fantasy yeah, Nine, Final Fantasy One had it. Like yeah. <laughs> And Pokemon, why is it not there? Yeah, yeah. And it's it's from a place I love a lot. This and a lot of these people are fans, and they just want to help make the game better. And so, how do you do it? Yeah, you make your own. Do you know? Funny enough, actually, that actually reminded me of I can't remember his name, but there was a Pokemon YouTuber who he used to make like all these fan videos based off of like fake um, regions. So we'd like pick a country and be like what Pokemon would be like if it was set in Italy or if it was set in, you know, like different places, yeah. like Australia, West America, things like that. And he would basically, like, have hours of content where he'd be like, these are the kind of Pokemon you would find, this is a story. And he would go through the entire, like, uh, play-by-play of what would happen if you played, like, this fictional game. Like, really into it. And then, like, like, he had this idea where, I mean, it was really interesting. Like, this guy was really really passionate and he had this idea of like like he had this um like evil team he came up with and then that soon evolved like one day you know in his channel he was just like initially he was like oh i wonder if this would make a good fan game because he was talking about what his dream like pokemon fan game would be and yeah. now he's developing his own game because of that like because he's had all these ideas and he's worked on it and it's as you said it's it seems as if it's from a place of love it's not like he's just seen it and he's said oh i'm gonna knock that off <laughs> and you know it's gonna be called did you wait no <laughs> you know <laughs> oh. <And> no. <laughs> Nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I swear, I, I can say that I bought a Digimon game <laughs> that I still haven't played. <laughs> I really want you to play as well because I know it's yeah. like 100 hours and I can't be bothered committing to that if it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I really want you to play it so you can tell me. I know, I'll need to play it on stream, definitely. I've, I've got it on the to-do list of like games to play on the stream. There's like kind of sitting there, like gathering digital dust and I'm like, soon soon <laughs> so it'll be in the next game eventually and then i'll end up playing more fall guys and being like oh no <laughs> what am i doing so kind of like the final question to sum up this you know to sum up this wide topic <laughs> like yeah. what would you say in general i think we've touched on a couple of the points but what would you say makes an indie game stand out compared to like just your run-of-the-mill game that's produced by you know, like EA, Bethesda, yeah. that kind of thing. If I actually, there's a few things I've not really touched on, so I'm going to mm-hmm. try to touch. I'm going to like this is like my sprint down the lane. Now I'm going to hit every yeah. single thing. No, go um, for it. One thing um, I think really, really is really important is like um, to play games take a long time to make. You know, what I mean, Cyberpunk's mm-hmm. been in development for like four or five years before it comes out. Yeah. So they're quite detached from like modern society. You know, what I mean, so it's, uh, games are always, and this is the same in films. They're always like a few years behind what's actually happened in the world. Or indie games take a lot shorter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, may, I might be wrong, but off the top of my head, like the first like LGBT characters were all in indie games. Mm-hmm. Like the first characters were like disabilities were in indie games. There's a lot more of like indie games can be a lot more inclusive in terms of the storytelling mm-hmm. because they don't have to go through six years of development. You don't have to go through a focus group to get to you know, and you don't have to go through all this to get to the end product. And I think like that's super important to tell a lot of these stories. Yeah from one one or two people and it, again it comes back to but finding people like you who are telling stories is so important and i think with this meg you know these giant corporations and it's like you can't really tell who's telling the story behind it and i think that's really really important to me um getting to get letting anyone get representation in games is so important i think like night in the woods and celeste off the top of my head are both games with the uh, lgbt characters in it which is super cool also you got like um the vici and vector game it was made by in vici before he passed and a lot of the game's profits went to charity again something that he can't really do for a massive company because you got to pay wages like oh, yeah. <laughs> you know and i'm not i'm not, I'm yeah, not yeah. being ridiculous i'm not saying oh, you should be giving all the money away yeah. you have to pay the wages you're a massive oh, company yeah, yeah. 
but games like Avicii and Vector, they donated a lot of money to, uh, I've forgotten the name of it now, that's a shame, but it's the charity that was set up by Avicii's parents after they passed and all, like that kind of thing, like that community is so important, I think, in gaming. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that is going to get, as indie gaming can build up, these stories and these charities and like important reasons for making games. Um, and you get things like the Humble Bundle as well now for a lot of indie games. Um, and they, a lot of that money goes to charity. So I think that's super important. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad like so many people get a chance to play them. Um, just looking at my list now of all my games that I've written down. <laughs> really cool that games, because they're indie games, there's no expectation for them to be massive. And so a game can come out that's only got like one core mechanic and still be incredible. And mm -hmm. um, we mentioned Super Hot, that's core mechanic was time stopped, except when you move. Yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> one that unfortunately had a bad release but here's really good now no man's sky their whole gimmick was we've got an auto generating planet go out go have fun like go go see what the world's all about or rogue legacy for people that are into that kind of game rogue lights in general they're just based on such a, a clever core concept oh and concrete genie which is the game of the month just now on the playstation you can download for free mm -hmm. um that's just got like a core art thing um and it's like I, I really find that really interesting because it's like here's something we really really like and we've built a game around it, and it doesn't always work. And sometimes it, you know, sometimes it's better than others. But you'll never see that in a AAA game. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you got <laughs> set games like um, I remember I played Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and <laughs> it was like um, had everything in that game. It was like base management. There was assassinations. Oh. There was character swapping. There was uh, combo combat and stuff. I was like, oh my goodness! I just want to play a game that gives me the chance to like learn everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you for money? I'm sorry, I'm just now reading bullet points. Yeah. <laughs> uh, value for money. Hollow Knight is like is taking up about a hundred hours of my life, I think. Damn. I think I bought that for fifteen quid um when it came out. Again, some indie games are six hours long, some games are hundred hours long. But you know, it's better than paying sixty quid for a game that's four hours long, like mm -hmm. um Sonic 06 or something. We don't talk. Soon. We don't talk about that in this stream. <laughs> <laughs> too, too soon. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all I'm gonna say at the end that's kind of my main I think all my points covered. Honestly, go check it out because I think a lot of games are made by such passionate people and especially indie games. Yeah. Oh, one more thing I'm going to mention, music. Because uh, the budget's a bit lower, people can get really creative with things like music. So you've got games like, we mentioned Crypt the Necrodancer. That's got an incredible soundtrack of like 16 songs and then they remixed it. And so oh, because really? they couldn't come up with like new songs, it's like actually just remixes all over the game. So you play through the game once as the main character and it's all like 16-bit music and then there's a character that plays through it with like death metal. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same songs but like with like crushing guitars and it's like a dubstep one. It's brilliant. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> it's so good. And one of my favourite games of all time, uh, Journey. I brought that up earlier. It won a, I think it won a BAFTA or it was nominated for a BAFTA at least. And I think it's like the first game ever to do it for its music because it's like it's all integrated into the, the gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, I can't quite explain it without trying to sound like an absolute diddy but like um as you progress through the game the music changes and everyone's just like like right, cool that's how music works great well done but it's like really integrated and really dynamic and it's super cool play journey if you haven't played it <laughs> and i think that's i think that was i don't think i took a breath there no. so i will stop <laughs> but um, that is all the things i think about indie games that i didn't get to talk about <laughs> No, I was going to say, I expect the PowerPoint, you know, <laughs> by Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, um, on, on, on the YouTube version, yeah. this was just like, here's all Craig's points, some, <laughs> some brilliant point. yeah. font size 6 or something to fit uh -huh. it all on the screen, but yeah, that was, I think that was everything yeah. I was had it? to say there. Nope, they're very good points, I have to say, <laughs> and I don't want to sound like a teacher saying, yes. <laughs> well uh, done, Craig. Yes, um, the B plus. You didn't mention. <laughs> you didn't mention a uh, whole. I didn't night. mention. Bug, I didn't mention bug fables again. <laughs> oh, bug I, fables, I of mention, course. Yeah, I wanted to mention that because talking about um, games that have stopped being made for like mm. Castlevania. This is just one where the game's taken a different direction, so people don't really like the Paper Mario games anymore. I don't. Uh, well, sorry, people that I see online tend not to like Paper Mario. I never mm. played them. Um, well, Bug Fables went. Are we making a Paper Mario game without Mario in it? <laughs> Here's Bug Fables. Go, go enjoy that. It's a me game. Um, and people were like going absolutely crazy. They were like Paper Mario fans going, this is the sequel to A Thousand Year Door that we never got. So yeah. so even games that haven't ended but have just gone off in a different direction, there's an indie game out there for you. Oh, and that's my final point. There's an indie game out there for you, and I'm pointing down the screen, but I don't have my webcam on, but... Damn it. You know. <laughs> One day. We we need you to play indie games. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll cool. Photoshop it later. <laughs> just you pointing down and saying, we need you. <laughs> <laughs> we need Give you me the beard. to... Yeah. To Uncle play Sam, Uncle it. Sam Hat. <laughs> oh god <laughs> yeah i'll need to i'll need to beef up on my photoshop skills <laughs> <laughs>
No, I, I totally agree with all of that. And that sounds like a very like cop out answer of yeah, I agree with that. Moving <laughs> on. No, one of the other things, like one more thing to add to that was and I know I've kind of like I sound like a broken record at this point of being surprised, like the shock Pikachu face of how versatile games can be. Mm-hmm. But one of the ones that I was really surprised at. So as you know, like I hop around like a lot on Twitch and one of the streamers, um, that I've been watching, Alex Blurry, he's he does a lot of um indie games on his stream and it's really surprising. Like a lot of games that he was playing, it was really surprising like some of the ideas. Like there was literally one game that he played where it was just like redecorating the house. Oh, yeah. And I can't remember what it was called. It was like I can't actually remember off the top of my head. But literally, just that idea of you go into this house, you have to like tidy everything up and you know paint a wall. And it's you know that <laughs> it's you know that Simpsons episode. I always thought of that when I was playing like Animal Crossing. When it's like uh... you know the Simpsons, you know the Simpsons joke <laughs> where Bart and Lisa won't do like the garden. Yeah, and then yeah. they go to the carnival when they see this VR machine for uh, it's like <laughs> the yard simulator or yeah, something. Yeah. It's like I want to go in the yard simulator. It's like but you. <laughs> she's just like Marge is just really annoyed at it That's but brilliant. it's just amazing like how they can take an idea like that mm. um, I'm just getting a message there saying that it's house flipper yeah uh, it's like right. a really it's just like a really comfy game it's weird yeah. to say that like oh you're watching someone redecorating a house but it is like really interesting and another one which again this is like the power of streamers was one I saw it was a game called Kind Words I don't know have you heard of this game? yes yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. like I honestly never hear i thought this was a new game but it turns out it's a 2019 game because yep. i looked this up like quickly before the stream and i thought oh it must be a new thing but <laughs> it's like yeah show my age be like oh it must be one of these new fangled <laughs> indie if games I, if, if, if i didn't know it, it must have came out last yeah. week <laughs> yeah. i know my, all indie games yeah my eyes were closed until i saw it so therefore <laughs> it came out yesterday <laughs> But that game really, like, shocked me in a good way. Because I remember watching it thinking, basically, the premise of the game is, in fact, it's not really a game. That is, like, a whole debate in itself. But it's basically people write anonymous letters just basically saying about their troubles or, you know, things they're going through and they want, like, anonymous advice. And basically, they send out a letter and that gets sent out to whoever's, like, playing the game at that time, and they can decide whether or not they want to answer it. So yep. initially, when I was watching Alex play this, I kind of thought, oh, you know, are these just, you know, made-up scenarios? You know, that, like, because genuinely, I didn't pick up initially that this was real people, like, kind of writing in, because I thought, it, it sounds stupid, but you know that way you're reading something, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, like... It's part of the game. Yeah, it's like, oh, it must be, you know... <laughs> it's like, damn, these, like, computer-generated problems are, <laughs> are getting better. But yeah, it was just such a simple idea. Yeah. And I honestly like actually went out and bought it like a couple of days later because I thought, okay, this seems like an interesting game. And like I went to, you know, like play it and I, I feel weird saying play it, you know, considering the content of the game. Yeah. But it's just a simple idea, and especially with everything going on in twenty twenty or that did go on in 2020, and, you know, things that are still going on just now, it almost seems like the kind of perfect place for people to vent. Yeah. And a lot of... Because, I mean, just the kind, just out of curiosity, like, I sent out a couple of letters myself, and the amount of uh, people who came back with, like, just such genuine and very positive, you it's know, incredible. feedback. It wasn't just, like, they weren't just, say, although I did get one person who, like, out of curiosity, I think I'd put something down, like, how do you deal with, like, you know, like, a creative block or something? And I think one person put, scribble, and that's all I put. <laughs> and I was just like, I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe yeah. that was, like, maybe that was, yeah. like, some key that unlocked their yeah. life. Um, yeah, it was just like, <gasps> like, grabbing the paper, Death Note style. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, get, get... I actually, the way you said that, you yeah. actually got my brain going. It's something I did want to bring up. Mm-hmm. It was... The whole concept of what a game even is is being challenged by indie games in a way that AAA games would never do, and that's a brilliant example. Like, mm-hmm. 
you would never have let like a studio would never risk that. And I think of um, Firewatch mm-hmm. is the other one that springs to mind, where it's just it's it's basically a walking game with a story over the top. It's it's mm-hmm. going out for a walk with a podcast, oh. and it, it's such an engaging game, and it's brilliant. Mm-hmm. And um, this barrier of what is a game, and like you say, especially what's happening in the world just now, but even going forward, and I think a lot of games that are like letting people connect in new ways mm-hmm. or letting people deal with like quite tough issues um spirit i think was another one that came out on the switch all about death and how to like let go of people as they pass on it was like mm-hmm. man, this is crazy that these games are getting made you know we, we come from like i don't again don't want to sound old yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of my first games was um desert storm on the sega mega drive sonic mm-hmm. the hedgehog and primal rage which is where you could use dinosaurs to fight each other mm-hmm. and <laughs> like this i never expected this would happen in the world like mm-hmm. Um, the games can become such a way of people connecting but thanks to indie games that's that's you know stories are getting told in a totally different and really mature way and i'm yeah mm-hmm. so I, I just really wanted to mention oh, that before yeah. uh because yeah that i did see that kind of words given it, it is a really clever idea yeah I, I honestly couldn't praise it enough um i think it's just such a good idea and i mean uh, as you were saying there i guess it just shows how games have evolved over the years yeah like it's just weird how it's gone from you know just a couple of pixels on a screen to this fully fledged like interactive experience and it does it shows like the potential that games can have It doesn't have to just be, as you were saying, it doesn't just have to be, you know, just a a typical story about go to point A, shoot B kind of thing. It doesn't have to be constricted. It can can really be anything it wants. I mean, I'm just trying to think of any other, like, examples. I mean... Well, one one example I've got is VR. Like, Well, that's true. When VR was first sort of coming out, Mm -hmm. it was, like, full of indie titles. Um, Shooty Fruity, off the top of my head. uh, Support. And I got VR, and like these games are really pushing the boundary of what's possible. Because again, like I've seen, you've got you know a one two year development time running some indie games, mm-hmm. so they were able to really try what's coming up and coming. And a lot of concepts you'll see in an indie game, and then two years later or three years later, will pop up in a, a Ubisoft game or whatever. You know, you know, yeah. these guys are on the forefront of technology, and I wouldn't be surprised if something like the be kind voice messaging system doesn't turn up in I don't know Spider Man three yeah. or something yeah. on the PS five. You know what I mean? I genuinely wouldn't because that's just how these games are working now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, indie games do, do you get that insight into the future, which is also really cool. And I mean as well, it gives. So I don't know about you, but every so often, like I'll go through a period where I really get into playing like a certain genre of game. Mm. Like there'll be a period where I'm really into FPSs. And then I'll get tired of that, and then I'll move on to something like, you know, RPGs maybe, or Pokemon or whatever, and then, or, you know, like, I kind of alternate between that. But there's some periods where you just get, like, a game in burnout, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Oh, yeah, totally. As opposed to the driving game, which, yeah, great game. But, Hmm. yeah, it's like you get this burnout where, you know, you kind of think... I, I, I don't really want to play games anymore. I just want to, you know, sit. <laughs> I want to sit and read a book. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's Offline. like... Yeah, I know. Oh, perish the thought. But, you know, it's <laughs> like... And I was kind of talking to you about this, like, just when you were saying about, like, walking simulators and things. Yeah. So there's two games um, that come to mind with that. The first one being Dear Esther, which yeah. I did voice... I mean, maybe I have to play it again. But I did voice, like, my disinterest in it. I didn't think at the time it was great. Because this was, like, I think I bought it during, like, one of the Steam sales. And that was, like, after me playing, like, Portal and Gmod and things like that. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, very, like, maybe not for Gmod, but you know what I mean. Like, very, like, fast-paced and kind of, like, interactive games, if you know what I mean. Like, yep. having to think about it. And then with Dear Esther, it was, like, you just had to walk forward. And I was, like, I, initially I was, like, really getting into it because I'm, like, oh, what's going to be in here? oh it's nothing oh what about <laughs> here oh it's nothing oh i see a symbol uh, is anything gonna pop <laughs> and nothing <laughs> nothing happened and i was just like <sighs> so maybe i have to go back like i've only played it once for like an hour or two so maybe 
I mean, if I don't even think I made the ever mark, maybe. I'll have to, like, go back and, like, give it a fair shot. The other one, though, is Stanley Parable. Yeah. yeah. Or the, the Stanley Parable. The. Sorry. The. <laughs> the Stanley Parable, which I did enjoy it, but I did feel as if it was very limited for what it was. But see, at the same time, though, not every game can be, like, you know 10 out of 10s kind of you know like it has to be like holding you 100% sometimes you just need a game like that just to have a break from like the fast paced shooting or yeah and it's like not every game's a 10 out of 10 to you as well you know 10 out of 10 to me and so one of my 10 out of 10 games uh, I've brought up a few times in the chat, mm-hmm. and I will never shut up about it. Um, Avicii, Avicii Invector, I see, yeah. I, see, I swear, you thought I was going to say Hollow Knight, and a Hollow yeah. Knight, but no, Avicii Invector, that's the game for me that I'll just put on, mm-hmm. like, that's my, I don't know what you call it, my hot chocolate and marshmallows game, it's yeah. just like, I just need to sit and relax, I kind of don't want to play anything, I'll just fire up Avicii Invector and just surf down that wee track and hit some buttons, you know, mm-hmm. and I think, you're right, sometimes you don't, sometimes you want a massive game, and sometimes you just want to, like, something that's nice and just just nice you know what i mean like that yeah. kind of relaxing time yeah you want like a kind of comfort game yeah yeah like i mean i think like games like kind words or yeah you know even even like untitled goose game you could <laughs> you could relatively <laughs> argue like you know if you've had like a stressful day and you want to you know release kind of some of that stress it's like yeah what better way than to harass a small village as a kiss what, one of our one of our mutual friends i won't please don't name him on this yeah team. no no one of our mutual friends is a teacher mm-hmm. and um see the bit where you get to bully the boy oh he was loving that he, was he <laughs> sometimes he texts me about it he's like think yeah. about that kid losing the glasses and i laughed today <laughs> it's like Jeez. a year after that <laughs> God, <laughs> but um, yeah. no, no, it, like that was just like, yeah. and you know, so like, right, so like something like this game is. Mm-hmm. I love the, the thought. One of my favorite things about games shading and what indie games allow you to do a lot of time, not every time, but because they're so simple, it's really easy to like pass a control somebody and say, hey, go play this game. Mm-hmm. You know, this game, but you play goose and you terrorize a town. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it's not like um, if I give someone, I think a really good game that I've played recently. At Last of Us Two, yeah. I have to give them two books of law and uh, uh, you know, like yeah. twenty seven hours to play it in my yeah. house while I go around to make a cup of tea or something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, which I love that game, but you know, what I mean, it's like yeah, yeah. being able to just think. I can't remember if it was yourself. Someone came into my house and basically finished Goose Game in one sitting while I was like working yeah. on something. <laughs> I was like oh, sitting next to me, just finished Goose Game. I was like, all right, uh, you going home yet? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it was. Um, oh no, it definitely wasn't me. It okay. Definitely wasn't me. Um, I, I was over at your house one time while you were playing it, and I think we only did the bit at the beginning where we just like tried to steal the keys, and it was honestly like you would think we were playing Risk or something. <laughs> the amount of like tactics we had, like we had the maps out, like okay, he's going to come around here. What if we? <laughs> like eventually, it's I like, think o- it... o- Ocean's Eleven. Like, yeah. <laughs> As, yeah, it's like devolving into, so you sure that a goose isn't strong enough to cut the brakes on his car? It's like, no. It's like, god damn it. Bad to the we draw. fit in a box and mail ourselves to yeah. <laughs> We could pretend to be the key repair man, you know. It just, nothing was working. But that that's the thing, though. It's like, that is definitely the sign of a good game when you think yeah. that you've got a story. Like, even with Human Fall Flat, don't get me wrong, yeah. Human Fall Flat is a very stressful game, and in all the wrong ways, I would say. <laughs> I love that game. Oh, I love it, but it's just it's one of those games that you play through, and it's like, obviously, trying to work out the puzzles, and it gets more complicated, and honestly, I think half of it is just, like, luck that you manage to mm. grab onto the right bit sometimes. <laughs> um, but again, it's like, it's a game that, without it, you know, without having that kind of that opportunity and those experiences you know yeah like if it was a bad game we wouldn't be talking about it really no. like unless it was utterly like horrific that we had to like bring it up yeah it's some a the, memorable it's, game yeah. yeah it's some of the most fun i've ever had playing a co-op game whether it's good fun or bad fun yeah um i don't know <laughs> uh, i think 
my wife always goes on about a concept called type two fun, which is like mm-hmm. um you know when people like claim, I don't know, Kilimanjaro and they get down and they're like, That was the worst experience of my life. I can't wait mm-hmm. to do it again next week. Oh, um yeah. that's called type two fun. It's like something yeah. you don't enjoy, but you absolutely love it. And like yeah. I think that to me is like what um human fall flat is. It's like so like a horrifying yeah. experience and at the end of it I was like, oh, I can really go play some human fall flat, right? <laughs> I never want to see this game again till next week. Do you know what actually reminds me of as well? Just just kind of going back to my own like streaming experiences. Overcooked 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, just for those listening wondering, you know, how... I mean, Overcooked 2 is a great sequel by all means. It is a very fun multiplayer game and everything. Yep. But if you have friends, you better hope that your like bonds of friendship are strong. <laughs> because I mean I've got a whole compilation video over on YouTube just yeah, documenting in case, you know, I was gonna get murdered by one of them with like a flying plate. <laughs> <laughs> exhibit A. Yeah. Exhibit A, the bun incident, you know, and I, I think we only did two, I could be wrong, but I'm sure we only did like two sessions on it. Yeah, it's just it's crazy it's crazy like how much fun you can have on the game and even though like you do have fallen outs and things like it's kind of light-hearted i mean it's the same with phasmophobia it's like you know you play those games and you think oh great you know it's you know i've been scared silly (laughs) i've been scared silly with this game and as for phasmo no but for phasmophobia you're like oh that was that was utterly terrifying and then you think okay same time next week and it's like yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? And it is, it's like that kind of... I mean, I can't remember what game it was you were playing quite a lot. I think it was Crypt of the Necrodancer. Was it Hollow Knight? No, it was Hollow Knight as well, but I think it was before... <laughs> I think it was before, like in all seriousness, I think it was before um, you started getting into Hollow Knight. It must okay. have been Crypt of the Necrodancer or one of these games. In fact, it might be Human Fall Flat because we played that quite a lot, like yeah. you and me and a couple of mutual friends. And I mean, that was fun because it was. It was just like this experience. <laughs> it sounds yeah. weird to say it's like, and it's, it's an experience that we all kind of suffered through together. <laughs> <laughs> it made us. It made us better people coming out of it. Oh, definitely. Unless you know your takeaway from Overcooked is set the kitchen on fire. Um, don't worry, I'll be talking to Adam next week in Chat Tsunami about that. <laughs> <laughs> the Chat Tsunami is on kitchen safety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, what do you do with the fire extinguisher? Throw it out the window? No. One of the other games that I actually forgot to bring up there from looking at my list was Oni in the Blind Forest. Did you ever play that? I've, I've got that on my list as well, actually. Yeah, I think that was a, an Xbox exclusive for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only recently come to Switch, so I'm going to actually, I haven't actually played it yet. But that comes under one of those games with, like, for me, journey and braid i've seen i've seen a lot of reviews on it where people are just like mm-hmm. loving about how how artsy it is and how it ties everything together and how it's just this beautiful story um oh, i haven't played it but i really want to like i haven't completed it so when i got my xbox one like years and years ago i got two free games with it so the first one was the witcher 3 haha <laughs> haven't played it. well i have played it but i haven't completed it and the second one was only in the blind forest and i remember playing like i never completed it i only played the beginning of it but i remember playing only in the blind forest and just realizing this is gonna sound weird but just realizing how beautiful the game could look yeah like on an xbox like it is, really sounds weird to say but you're just you're playing this game and you think how does this game look so good <laughs> you know <laughs> like back then like obviously it's not like uh, this is the thing like especially with a lot of indie games it's not hyper realistic graphics and it doesn't no. have to be to be you know to look beautiful you know it's amazing how it's just a couple of pixels or a couple of like drawings and things and don't get me wrong like i'm not saying only indie games can be you know <laughs> only indie games can be beautiful <laughs> get out of here triple <laughs> a games but no in all seriousness it's it was I think just that like... comes back to talking about like mm-hmm. one person's vision and style, and I yeah, think yeah. like take a shot because I mentioned Hollow Knight. If anyone's playing that game at home, please don't because it's Wednesday. But um, <laughs> yeah, or maybe during the day if you're listening on the podcast later. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Hollow Knight is like super stylistic. It's just got its own style, and I think it's one of the most beautiful games ever made. Like part of the reason I actually went back to play it recently was because I got a new TV. I was like, I need to see what this looks like on a new TV. And yeah, it doesn't look as good as, I don't know, like Gears of War 5. That's a great looking game. Or like um, The Witcher. The later Massive, The Witcher. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, 
I mean, that's a that's a beautiful looking game. Yeah. They watched a TV show with Henry Cavill. Ten Just, you know what I mean? But like, ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. Great TV show. <laughs> um, but mm. like a lot of games, um, in the game Sexy Brutal is another one I wanted to mention, mm-hmm. where it's just like they've got like a super nice style and it looks beautiful and it doesn't need to be complicated mm-hmm. and it looks incredible in its simplicity. And I think that's I think that's something to really say for indie games. Like again, not all of them, but yeah, mm-hmm. I think you don't have to be hyper realistic to look incredible as a game. Yeah, no, I agree with that. It is, it's all, I mean, I know we're kind of looking back to what we are saying at the beginning, but it is all very subjective. And I know that is, like, you could extend that to, like, games in general, but, like, especially for indie games, because, I mean, there's so many that you could mention. I mean, two that I haven't played, although they're highly recommended from Adam, was that Return to Obra Dinn, or Jin, and What Remains of Edith Finch. Yep. I mean, there's those as well. And kind of going back to what you were saying before, I cannot remember for the life of me what this game is called, but there was a game <laughs> that, again, I think it might have been um, Alex Burry who was playing it. And yeah, he's a bad influence when it comes to playing indie games. Because <laughs> every this so... guy sounds like he's playing every indie game under the sun. Has he yeah. played Hollow Knight yet? I Alex actually... Hollow Knight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, endorsed by Craig. Let's <laughs> like, play it. Um, the reason I was saying that was like, I remember he was playing a game that I can't even remember what it's called, but it's basically you play as a cat and you like move back home. So it's like, I think you go to university and then you have to move back home. And it's like all of these kind of very stylized, like drawn kind of graphics. Yeah. Oh, I, the I, name's in the tip of my tongue. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. The, it. yeah. But it was just, like, see, watching it, initially I thought, oh, it's going to be one of those kind of stylized, yeah, getting the message through, saying it's night in the woods. Well done, Satsu, well done for remembering that. <laughs> nah, jokes aside. Yeah, it's cool. Called... I actually mentioned that game earlier as well. <laughs> Did you, actually? <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. No. I know. Mine's like Civs on this channel. <laughs> But yeah, Night in the Woods, it's like initially when I watched it, I didn't know what it was all about. And that is like, that is one of the main hooks for indie games. Because usually yeah. when you see like a AAA game or, you know, like a game that's made by a big publisher, usually you kind of think, oh, it's, you know, oh, this is a shooter game. Oh, this is, you know, your typical like RPG or whatever, or, you know, yep. sports game. You know, you can tell usually. But for a lot of indie games that I've seen, it kind of like, dangles like that kind of curiosity in front of you like it has a hook and it's like oh do you want to see what this game is about and you're kind of like okay okay you've you, you've piqued my interest Let, let's see where we go and night in the woods like starts off as like all of these animals just you know like being haha party animals and kind of things like that and then you see like the kind of deeper themes in it when it's talking about like mental health that's talking about you know like inner demons and things like that again i don't i don't think that as you were saying like a game from a huge gaming company would be able to tackle that the same probably no. like i mean don't get me wrong obviously they have like from an objective level obviously they have the resources and everything like that but i mean as like the kind of gaming landscape is just now they've got a lot more freedom to kind yeah. of take on that very serious issue and night in the woods isn't the only one you know there's just so many games that deal with kind of more personal issues yeah and i loved what you said about the game opening like the game hooking you with its like curiosity because yeah. um i've recently played hades on the switch mm-hmm. and that is an excellent example of that where it's got all these underlying plots of various characters mm-hmm. different tackling on like parenting and sort of um how people can deal with like reaching goals when they can't achieve them stuff there's actually quite a lot of like really deep stuff in there but the game itself kind of reveals itself to you in stages it's, it's kind of hard to explain mm-hmm. without i don't want to spoil it for people yeah. but there was a point about nine you know, hours in where i was like i've got this game figured out and i'm probably gonna put it down soon and then i'm playing it 50 hours late and i'm still getting phone for a loop every so often and it, it, it's mm-hmm. it's very clever how it, how it opens up and that's something you just can't really do to play games because you have to know like the games just become famous on the you know what i mean like halo could never turn into a a totally different game halfway through. Uh, for example, I was playing Undertale recently, oh, yeah. um, which I think is what ten years old or something now. Uh, um, I only got yeah. around to playing it recently. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, and that was on the edge of my seat at the end of that. And um, I had no idea where that game was going. I know what's going to happen at the end of Persona 5. You know, broad brush jokes. I know the good guys are going to win, the game's done. But you know, <laughs> I mean, but, like yeah. Undertale, it has different twists throughout it. And, and because it, it can do that, because it's just so simple. So, you know, and, and you know, you're totally right. This like curiosity of bringing you into a game and like revealing itself. It's something that indie games can do on a whole different level because there's no rules. Mm-hmm. You know, like you say, a triple A game, you kind of know what you're getting. Well, there's no rules for a, an indie game. If it, if it wants to turn, uh, Little Nightmares is probably another good example of that, where it's like, mm-hmm. if it wanted to turn into a shooting game at the end, you probably would have been like, fine, let's do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the game's just got yeah. so many little bits that it keeps kind of hitting at new features and stuff. It's brilliant. Well, funny you should mention that about Little Nightmares, because I remember, and uh, again, it must have been a good couple of months ago, like last October in 2020, and... I remember at the very end, or in like certain sections of it, the majority of it is just you are like a small, like this small person in this huge kind of world, like that's just so oversized, and you're crawling through all these ducks, uh, the like air vents, and just like trying to avoid everything. But then at the very end, they throw you into like a boss fight. Yeah, yeah. they do it in such a way that you have to like adapt. To it. I mean, don't get me wrong, yeah. they do that as well, like at the beginning. At least yeah, for some of them. It and they, and they, yeah. release, they reveal more and more. It's very clever. Yeah, it is really well great. done. It's like a slow. I wouldn't say it's a slow burner because you are on the edge of your seat constantly yep. <laughs> getting <laughs> chased, getting chased by people. Um, but yeah, it's as you said, it's like as soon as they change and swap over to something else, you're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm all up for this. <laughs> it's like, let's do this. All I'm saying is, if only they did have like anything to defend yourself with in that game. <laughs> like, it would be a kind of a different game if you suddenly pulled out a rifle, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that actually reminds me, and this is like going back to kind of probably further back with um, indie games. Like, do you remember the game Slender, the seven pages, or the yeah. eight pages? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that. I mean, that's a good example as well of just yep. a very simple idea. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't like, I think at the time it was probably groundbreaking, before like everyone else tried to kind of copy that idea and run it to the ground. But, I mean, yeah, that was a simple idea. It's like, oh, you've got a clear objective, try and do it and don't get caught by the monster kind of thing. Although I always remember just, going back to that idea of not making a game scary, was there was always an edit where this guy gets caught by the Slender Man, but then he turned round and he edits himself, like, shooting at him. <laughs> 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 like, just the overlay, and it's like, yeah, that would, yeah, that would have just ruined the game entirely. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, yeah, think, that's I, think that's, I think that's the note that we've yeah. probably reached the end because that's oh, been a like, lot of fun and I think we've talked I've, I've, I've oh, mentioned every like, every game yeah. list. <laughs> I was except for Amnesia Dark Descent um, but that's I not an indie that. game yeah. I assume it was because it was not made by like one guy I can't remember quite possibly yeah. I feel like it was if it isn't send your complaints to Satsunami at Satsunami at Satsunami at gmail.com whatever it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah send it to that one <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah, I was actually going to ask before we finish up, is there any like particular games you wanted to bring up or like give a brought, honourable shout out? I think I've brought them all up now. I don't think I mentioned Phoenix Point actually, which was a, a spiritual sequel to XCOM. Mm-hmm. So the guys that made the original XCOM on the PlayStation 1, I think it was, like that era, PC era then, and they got it bought over by 2K, who made the um, Enemy Unknown and XCOM 2, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, but the original designer went off and made Phoenix Point. So that was kind of cool that he got a bit kind of similar to Bloodstained. Mm-hmm. I always want to mention Guacamelee, oh, um, which is like a Castlevania game where you play Luchador, yeah. which is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> um, I streamed a bit of that once upon a time. It was really good fun. And I don't think I mentioned it, so Hollow Knight, um, pick up that if you get the chance. Yeah. No, I don't think <laughs> no, you that, mentioned that. No. Uh, okay, so Hollow Knight <laughs> would be my other one to, to pick up. Oh, um, it's getting a sequel at some point soon. Yeah. yeah, those are the ones. And if you haven't played Journey, uh, please play that. It's one of my favourite games of all time, and it, does, it should have more love. It's about four hours long, so honestly, just take four hours out of your life, get some headphones, put the TV on full blast, close all the curtains, and just play it for four hours and just have a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably all my wrap-up thoughts for the, the big games I would recommend. So that was that was both... Um, oh, and Avicii and Vector, please oh, play yeah. that. Because I, I, I want more DLC for it, and they'll, they'll make more DLC if more people buy it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way gaming works now. <laughs> Like, I, please, no. yeah, I mean, there's honestly like so many we could talk about. I mean, ones I've missed out as well, Serial Cleaner as well. Yeah. That, was, that was a fun one, but it got very annoying very fast um, with certain bits. 
<laughs> I need to go back to it. Even play it in stream and just like force myself to actually finish it and <laughs> think about the puzzles. Um, another one, R- I don't know if this counts as an indie game, but RMX, I think it's called. It's like a spiritual successor to F Zero. Okay. It's like a real. Ro- sure yeah, it's like a I... really fun like racing game. I don't know if that counts as an indie game, but I mean, if it does, then by all means, like yep. check it out. But I suppose for my like list wrapping up again, Castle Crashers or Battle Block Theater, both great games. If you want a good beat 'em up game uh, with good humor, uh, Castle Crashers. If you want the same, but instead a platformer, go for Battle Block Theater as well. Overcooked. As much as we were joking about it, Overcooked is a really fun game. It's incredible. With friends. You haven't like, played it. You have to yeah, play it. You have to play it, especially with friends. I think definitely it's a game with friends. Phasmophobia as well. Like I've had a blast with a lot of that. I would only say if you're not, pr- if if you like horror. Definitely go for mm. it. If you don't like horror, avoid it by all <laughs> means. Yeah, if you want an alternative to Pokemon, Temtem, definitely would recommend at least checking it out because I honestly I'm really digging the style and where that game's actually going to go. Really going to be excited to see where that goes. And then, of course, the last one is yeah, I would recommend games like Kind Words, which I know sounds like a weird one to kind of end on, but I don't know. I feel as if like considering the way things are going these days and just yeah gaming has become more and more of a hobby you know it's a kind of it's a nice game to like kind of go back on and just you know like take time out just to you know either vent your problems or even just try and help other people you know it's just such a good game for that and as you said craig it just shows how games as a whole have basically just evolved really yeah, it's like... funny to think it's at the start of this episode you asked me what is an indie game and yeah. they were asking what's a game like yeah. it's, it's, it's <laughs> gone, but no as it kind of was a great recommendation to close and i think mm-hmm. you know it's games are such a great release for people and a great escape for a lot of people and i think games like that are so important and yeah, no, it's a great. I think it's a great one to finish on. Just before we wrap up, first of all, thank you so much, Craig, for once again coming on to chat tsunami. Oh, it's been it's been a blast. This yeah. is one of my probably my favourite topic ever to talk about in general. So, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm always up, I'm always up for chatting into games. Yeah. And I was just going to say as well, I think this is your very first episode in chat tsunami in 2021. Yeah, it must be. I think so. If there actually has been another one, I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> will my face be red. <laughs> I'm sure it's one of the first anyway. I'll say one of the first and I'll cover my back. <laughs> uh, yeah, according to our Discord chat logs, I was on call with you on the 6th of January. What was it, um, the 6th of January? Satsunami said Craig hadn't been on, but he had been. I hope someone gets fired yeah. for that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh God, what were we talking about? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, don't worry. I'll cut it out. I'll put it out. I'll send it <laughs> myself. <laughs> Craig, where can these lovely people listening to this podcast find your content? Well, if you want more of me, the primary place to hear my lovely voice is the Beard and Chill podcast. Um, Just search Beard and Chill podcast into whatever podcast tool you use. So whether it's Spotify, whether that's Anchor, whether that's Podcast Addict, whatever, that will search for it. You can download us all. Subscribe to us, please. That really helps us. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Beard and Chill Pod. Uh, if you want to come get get some more extra behind the scenes stuff and just highlights of the episode and what's coming up in the future, or if you want to chat to me directly, I don't know why you would, but you can do. If you want to chat to me about indie games, I'm always happy to chat. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Craig Ali Martin, C R A I G Ali, spelled A L I Martin. Or um, something new, if you want to find out more about my life in the crazy world of professional wrestling and uh, keeping fit and fitness and food and all that good stuff, you can find me on Instagram under my uh, wrestling world as uh, at Martin McAllister, which is uh, Martin, then M-A-C, Alistair, spelled A-L-I-S-T-A-I-R. It's really hard to spell when you're under pressure. That's all my places, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I believe. Um, If you find me on an account which isn't one of them, please don't talk to me. (laughs) <laughs> if you find my tumble don't add me <laughs> yeah yeah it's like it's all the fake um craig accounts out there yeah, you have to be yeah. wary about yeah so yeah. basically if you get a message from craig asking you for your bank details mm. then yeah don't yeah, answer it <laughs> i think that's a good rule of thumb regardless <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking like you know the scene in terminator 2 yeah where he calls and he's like oh your parents are dead um if you're not oh, sure yeah. if it's me 
Messi saying, what's your favourite indie game? And I'm yeah. going to come back with Hollow Knight and it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favourite Hollow Knight? Uh, sorry, what's your favourite indie game? What's an indie game? Craig's dead. <laughs> oh. That's how to tell. Yeah. But no, it's been an absolute okay. blast being on the show. Thank you everyone in the chat for coming in and listening to me yap. This has been good. Um, I'll catch you on Touch and Amy's Discord if you're looking for me or if like I said all social media places so thank you um, that's all from me I think oh thank you so much once again I know I sound like a broken record but genuinely thank you for you know yeah. spreading the word of indie games <laughs> <laughs> it's a long needed <laughs> it's a long needed topic on Chats and Amy definitely so yeah if you want to follow my stuff which, I mean that in the nicest way possible. I'm like, yeah, 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 your stuff. If you want to follow me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. If you want to follow uh, more of my content, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. And, of course, we've also got a Discord as well. But if you want to find me in any of those websites, you can find me under the name Satsunami42. And, yeah. If you want to see my compilation videos, definitely check out YouTube. You want to see behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, or my cooking skills or attempt to at cooking yeah you can go for instagram uh, twitter for any updates tiktok i don't know how to use tiktok but yeah there's there's videos up there i'm, I'm sure i think that's all from me as well um, you can also join our discord server that is the satsunami society where we just we're a pretty nice and quite a small but really nice community of very supportive people so if you want to join that yeah please feel free so as always thank you all so so much for listening and yeah stay safe stay awesome and most importantly stay hydrated bye guys <laughs>